audio is coming from this? No, no. I no. Don't worry about it. Oh, you got it. Okay. brave and see if I can do this. Okay. This is why they need to have time between panels. So people have time to set up their stuff. But it's a new show, so we learn, right? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Stay on target. Almost. Yeah. Porkins, really? He had the fat guy Porkins? Really? I mean... of my card, but it should work. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Portland. It's sunny outside. Oh, yes, so beautiful. Yeah. It was supposed to like rain all day or something like that. It's sunny outside. That's pretty nice. My name is Brian Haberlin. Uh, I've been a professional artist since I was 18. I've been a professional comic book artist since 1993. I. Uh, Co-created Witchblade, I had my own line of comics, Hellcup, Stone, uh, Aria, um, I penciled and inked Spawn for two years, I was editor-in-chief for Todd McFarlane, um, my studio and myself uh, have worked on pretty much every comic title that there is at one point or another, Marvel and DC, all that stuff. Uh, before I teach you the dark secrets of digital advanced digital inking, I'm gonna pimp out my new books for a second. This is Anomaly for anyone who hasn't seen it before. This is the longest original full color graphic novel ever done. 370 pages, landscape, huge sci-fi fantasy epic. Yes, sir? Where and how much? You can get it down in my booth, 810. It's normally $75, it's $40 here at the show and I'd be happy to sign the copy on the co-artist and co-writer. So that's an example of one of the spreads, but we were crazy enough to do a pull out. So you really get a spread there. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so one probably weighs about 13 and a half pounds. So there's an anomaly workout. So we have biceps. <laughs> we have triceps. It can be used as an offensive weapon if you need it to be. It also can take a small caliber bullet. Nothing higher than a 22, okay? <laughs> but wait, there's more. It also has 50 pages of augmented reality in it. And you let me know if this thing falls out because it's being held on by nothing. So I take the app. That's free, by the way. Okay. 
Hold on. Come on back now. Be good. All righty. All right. So. All right. Don't worry. <laughs> I've dealt with this stuff before. I can handle it. I can handle it. I can do it. How about now? We lost it? <laughs> okay. 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 Tell me. Okay. So I'm in case I lose. So then you get the app. You point it at the book. That's just, that was just our ode to a, a virtual pop-up book. That was the very first test thing we did. So everything on the inside of the thing, and please again let me know if I lose my connection, is fully interactive 3D. So, and I'll do in a next panel on creation of graphic novels that anyone wants to slide over there after this. Make sure my sound is all the way up. Thanks. You go full 360 around the character. He's interactive. You poke him. He'll start poking you back. And then there's another 100 pages of appendices information that's not contained in the actual graphic novel. I'll show you one more. Stay, page, stay, stay, be good, page. Watch hi. <laughs> so the book, the app tells you which pages are all in reality. What's cool about that is about three months ago we updated and we added 10 new pages of augmented reality, making it the first graphic novel ever to be able to change and grow after publication. Okay, so that's kind of fun. If you go down to the booth, we have free posters, postcards, samples of our next book, Shifter, that'll be out next month, 200 page original graphic novel. We have the postcards, you can get the free app for the postcards, and don't worry, we'll get digital linking in a second and I'll show you things that you'll love, so it'll be okay. <laughs> and then, you get this free app, you tell it which marker you're using. One of my banged up postcards. Anomaly, available now at your local book and comic book store. And, and you can do a virtual magic show. Thanks. Watch hi. Nothing up my sleeve. Itan Eok. Mug. And they're all interactive. Yeah. I could do it with my nose, maybe. Can I get them with my nose? There you go. <laughs> so free, go down, get these for yourself, the posters too. They're all interactive. Take them home, amaze your friends, befuddle the elderly. <laughs> okay, now let's get on to why you're here. Booth 810. Let me get this plugged in. Oh, it's so nice when it works. Okay. All right. I am going to show you dark magics and dark cheats. You have to all promise me that we'll use these new powers that I'm giving you for good, okay? And how you, then you have to leave. Um, and then, that no, can be your point of view, it's okay. As long as you're intending good, it's all right. Um, but I also need you to promise that you won't just use the cheat techniques, that you'll actually practice doing some inking yourself, okay? Promise? All right. That's enough. All right. So I've had here a nice little piece of kit. This is a Wacom 13 uh, Cintiq. It's nice when you get to draw on the, on the, on the thing. 
they were nice enough to give me, let me use one for this thing. Let me see how good I can do this with my keyboard. I still need my keyboard. Okay. All right. Digital inking. We're going to go through the different processes and, and the different emulations. I'm going to use Photoshop mostly. You can digital ink with Manga Studio. You can digital ink with GIMP. You can digital ink with all kinds of stuff that are out there that's good. You know, Illustrator, ugh, but you can. <laughs> Freaks me out. Um, but I'm going to show you primarily Photoshop in this, in this panel, OK? Um, all right, so let's talk about the, the, the really basics, and then we'll go really fast into, boy, I have to go really fast. OK, so resolution is your friend with inks. With colors, you can res up things, and they'll be kind of OK. Res them up, unsharp mask, you're OK, OK? Um, inks, however, are not as flexible when it comes to that stuff. You need the resolution to start with. If you do something at 72 DPI and expect to run it as a poster, it's going to look like doo-doo, OK? So always do your work, even if it's just for the web, OK? Always do your work at a high resolution. That means, let's take a standard comic book board. That's 11 by 17, OK? So 11 by 17, no, I don't need any of this stuff. Um, 11 by 17, let's say it was a conventional board that we're scanning, okay? So we're gonna scan it, it's already penciled and inked, I'm gonna scan it, whatever. 400 DPI or higher, okay? That'll give you plenty of, plenty of room. Some people go 600, okay? More the merrier. If, if your machine is fine doing that, then go 600 DPI, you know? So, resolution is our friend. So we want high resolution, okay? up something here. This is a piece, let me get this set up. This is a piece donated by my friend Dave Finch for me to screw around with. You can see it's very tight. All this kind of stuff, okay? Now, um, there's several approaches that I'm going to show you. So let's say you get, or you pencil like, how many people here actually are comic book artists right now? Okay. How many people want to be comic book artists and aren't there yet? Okay. So one approach to digital inking is being a tight frickin' penciler, okay? You take David's stuff, and I draw on it like that, and it's perfect. <laughs> you take David's stuff, and basically, if you take this and start doing a cleanup on it and darkening it, which I'll show you first. So this is basically digital inking, cleaning up clean pencils, okay? So we have David's piece in here. Let's see what David gave it to me, image size at. We're 11 by 17, 300 DPI. That's the low end. If we're going to go to inks, let's go ahead and bump it up. Okay, so the, so the pencils are more pliable, so I'll bump, I'll bump up the pencils to, to 400 DPI. And that's why I have my keyboard here. Okay, so they're 400 DPI now. Um, let me move it to a more interesting spot. Let's go right there. Okay, so we have tight pencils. First thing to do is levels. We're going to pull in the blacks. See, when I slide that in, this affects the dark parts. So it's making all his parts that were gray more towards black, OK? This, you know, knows when I do that, I got all this smudge stuff still around from when he always put his hand on the board or whatever the heck the deal is. You know, he's not the super immaculate guy. The super immaculate guy, there's two super immaculate guys. There's Frank Quitely and there's Jeff Campbell. Those are the guys who do pencils and there's no smudges on the, on the boards. Okay, so now I'm bringing up the whites. And see what's happening? See how I'm losing all that schmutzy stuff? Okay? You're almost never going to land perfectly with just levels. Okay? You want to get it in the ballpark with levels. Okay? You want it to do most of the work for you at this point. Okay? And believe me, we'll get into the funner part later. Um, so I'm going to go right about there. Hit OK. So 
you're going, okay, great, you know, but it's still kind of penciling in here and penciling in there and all these kind of stuff like that, right? So let's first attack it by making his darks blacks, okay? So the easy way to do that, and half this stuff has to be, you can't globally do half this stuff because a human hand did the pencils. So it's not gonna be consistent levels of, of dark in the pencils throughout the piece. So at a certain point, your hand, even though it's digital hand, has to be back on it, okay? So I'm gonna go into the Dodge and Burn tools. I'm gonna go to the Burn tool, okay? A great big Burn tool, which is way too big for what I wanna do. There we go. And right now it's on highlights. So if I go into this on highlights with the Burn tool, notice what happens when I go on the white. See how everything is getting darker? Okay, that's not what we want. And highlights is usually the default setting in, in Photoshop. You want to change it to shadows. What that means is, Photoshop will now only the Burton tool will only affect darker areas of the piece. So now I can go into this area and go bump, 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 and we'll just get the blacks darker. Doesn't affect the whites. Doesn't affect the light grays, unless I keep going at it going But which one of you guys would do that? None of you would do that. Um, but you can see, you just go right in. Get back to black, get to black, get in this area, until I get a black, bingo bango, okay? Now, there's still these other little bits, his little drawing bits. So we need to now go to the other side of the dodge and burn tool, which is the dodge tool, okay? Think of the Dodge tool, and it's gonna be running on highlights, as your eraser, okay? So it will go through all these little bits, and you just go over with the Dodge tool. If you get some lines too light, go back over it with that burn tool that I just showed you. But this will enable you to clean up the piece. So it's like you're going over it with an eraser. See, I'm getting rid of these little lines here, these little lines here, these little lines here, you know? So it's really, at this point, when you have something clean, digital inking is essentially like you're going in and you're, 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 it's almost more cleaning, okay? Okay. Now, having said this, okay, and a lot of the industry has gone this way. Most books are not inked by an inker anymore. They're mostly done with someone who's a tight penciler and they do this either to themselves or they have somebody else do it to themselves. Um, that being said, having a good inker, whether that inker uses traditional or digital means, can always add to the piece. The problem with this process, and it's okay, um, the problem with this process is I'm not adding anything to Dave's work. I'm not adding any line weights. I'm not making a lot of decisions about, oh, let's throw in some hatching in here or, or, or whatever. I'm, we're just going with what we got, okay? But if you guys are your own artists and you eventually want to get this way, you can draw your pencil work to benefit from this, okay? So you can, gain, you can gauge it to be done like this and it will save you a step and you're not gonna share a fee with an inker or anything like that and it's not gonna hurt your art sales, okay? Pencil pages go just fine, okay? Um, all right, so. Let's play with this another way. So let's say we wanted now more to do the digital equivalent of traditional inking. That means we're gonna use tools that simulate a crow quill, a brush, a pencil, all these kind of things, right? And we're still gonna take this Dave piece, I'm gonna revert it, bring it back to pencils, okay? Bring this over, because we're working on a scrunched low-res monitor. I'm gonna make a new layer. Couple ways. Yeah, normally I would, I'm lazy at the moment. <laughs> but you're right, yes, you should redo the resolution. Okay, so I'm making another layer. Now, there's a couple ways to go. I don't like, if I'm gonna ink this, it's dark enough that if I start going into By the way, my tool presets and my brushes and my swatches, maybe my swatches, maybe not, are on my website, digitalarttutorials.com, 
And then there, if you go forward slash files, there's my repository of just file stuff you can get. And it's called the Beauty of Black and White, I believe, or it's Adobe Creative Summit. I can't remember, that's where I've dumped them, okay? So if you wanna grab them, you can grab them from there. All right, so this is my very cleverly named Better Inking Brush 2ABC. It's catchy, right? Um, this is the best inking brush you can possibly make for Photoshop and keep Photoshop in the bloody thing. Yeah, come back, come back. Um, for simulating either a quill pen or a brush in Photoshop. Let me go through the settings really quick, okay? So, it's a basic round brush. It's got shape dynamics on. Okay. It has a roundness jitter on, which means the brush will squeeze. Okay. So that will give us a little bit more of a fine point on the end. Okay. Let me get a blank, new blank thing, new. Okay. And then plus, 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 plus. Let's see where we are. Okay. So that's basically that brush, okay? Um, it has, for some reason, this is a trick, and nobody in Adobe knows why it works, but it does. It has texture on it, but notice the texture is nothing. It is a white piece of something. That will enable you to get a little bit more squeeze on the ends. It's one of the big beefs everybody has with Photoshop brushes, is I can't get that little, I want, I want, I want the little, you know, that's a professional turf. You, know, you can call up Scott Williams, he'll tell you about that. Um, anyway, um, okay, so you need to have that on. Here's the real key though. See the brush profile down at the bottom? That'll show you the, you know, what it does when it gets thick to thin and stuff like that. So if I take dual brush off, see how it got fatter? Okay. I'm gonna do this, this line again with the dual brush off. And see how, how kinda, I don't quite, it's harder for me to get that nice, thin thing, really thin, thin thing, right? I have a dual brush and it's set to a one pixel brush. So it's always gonna start at the tiniest little point that I possibly can get, okay? That's important, that is the way this thing works. Smoothing's on, you know, I can't tell the difference if smoothing really works or not in Photoshop half the time, so I leave that to you. Um, let me jump back for a second. How many of you people, by the way, if you're gonna do this and you're actually gonna do the drawing inking and doing drawing in Photoshop, you need to have a tablet. It doesn't have to be a Zintiq. It could be a bamboo. They're just perfectly fine. You can get them for like 50 bucks or less on eBay and stuff, okay? You need to have something you're drawing. You can't do this with a mouse, okay? You can do that cleanup thing that I was just showing you before. But if you're actually drawing, you need a tablet, okay? So. So, okay, so this is the brush. I can get, if I press lightly, I get thin lines. I press heavy, I get thick lines, okay? Now, I found something, and this is for, I think there's a Mac version, but I'm not sure. This is something for people who have trouble getting nice, smooth lines in Photoshop, because unless you draw all the time, you're gonna have trouble getting nice, smooth lines in Photoshop, okay? This is Lazy Nizumi, okay? What Lazy Nizumi will do is add another layer of smoothing on top of Photoshop's. If you've ever used Painter or um, even Manga Studio, they have a heavier smoothing algorithm to them, so it will make the lines smoother. Or if you ever, anyone here ever use ZBrush? You know what Lazy Mouse is? This is Lazy Mouse for drawing. Okay, so. I'm not gonna get into it because we're so short here, but I would suggest, it's, free it's a free plugin, free download, Lazy Nizumi, okay? Check it out, especially if you have problems with getting a little kind of quivery stuff in your lines, okay? So, let's get back here. Okay, so that's that brush. Let's close that. Let's go back to Dave's art. I've got a layer here. Now there's, the way I prefer to do this, and it's a little bit old school, um, is I'm gonna go ahead, fill that layer with white. I'm gonna bring down the opacity. 
because I want to see it, but I don't want it to get in the way of my lines while I'm working on the inking. So then I have one more layer above, okay? So now, And you just start basically. What you have to decide for yourself too, guys, is you're either, and you'll find this out as you start drawing, you're either a puller, means you draw your lines towards you, okay, or a thrower. When you're really good and you do them both, you can do both things, okay. Uh, I was lucky enough in the early part of my career to be able to learn inking from, you know, the likes of, of Scott Williams and Danny Mickey and all these guys. And Scott is so good that Scott could throw with a crow quill pen, a dip crow quill pen, across a double page spread, he can throw a grab. He can go boom, 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 speed lines. Okay? That's from practice. I asked him, how did you do that? And he said, it's the being there approach to inking. You just have to imagine that it's easy. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but there's a certain amount of truth to it, okay? And you'll find that out as you do this stuff. Okay, so basically, I've got my brush, which is essentially just my, or my, my, my ink, and I just start going in, and you know, I'm a puller, by the way. And boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you can start hatching, bringing it down. Start doing your own lines. Brush is really, really not calibrated. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but anyway, so here I go. I'm doing all this stuff. Now, the best part about digitally inking is, and it's the hardest part about real inking in the real world, is there's not a lot of good negative tools, meaning white, getting back in with white. Okay? Digital tools, guess what? You could do all kinds of things with white. So I'm going to change this layer now to a multiply layer. What multiply means is that all the darks show up, lights invisible. So white's invisible, right? So I'm going to change this layer that I'm making in to multiply. I'm going to switch my brush to white. Then I can come back in and sit there and like, oh, that line was too fat, I'm gonna carve back into it. That line's too fat, I'm gonna carve back into it. I wanted to add a little bit more kind of ditty things in here, maybe, you know. And then I can bop back and forth between the white, the white from the black, and get back to my brush tool. Come back in. So it's far more flexible. You're not like, Oh my God, I'm on paper, I've got my quill, and I've got my Indian ink, and oh my God, I'm the, do I put that line there? Oh, I, I don't know. Do I put my line there? I don't know. And it's going to be hard for you to get the line up. Here, free, be free, have fun. You can come back in and keep carving into it, changing it with <coughs> negatives, all kinds of stuff, okay? Now let's say some of you aren't the best at controlling those inks. So you need to have more control than that. I, 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 I strongly advise when you're good and you practice, you get fast and things don't get in the way of your creativity, okay? And the less you need to know these tricks that I'm about to show you, the better. But that means time put in and you're actually drawing and inking all the time, okay? So let's say, okay, let's see. Um, I'm just gonna draw a line out here. So I got, these lines, let's see, okay, so I'm hatching, boom, 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 these are the hatching I want, ding, 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 great. But you know what? That second to the last line, it's not exactly what I want. So, basically, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go, ding, 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 ding. Wait a, yeah, there we go. Let's, that, 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 that's more like what I want. I want to move it in just like that. Yeah, what you can do is I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the puppet warp tool. Okay. Okay. So you can really take that tool, and I mean, I can take this line, right? 
Photoshop is now also a vector tool if you have a high enough res. Okay? None of your lines are built to be stuck. Let me show you how this works in um, conjunction with like fixing a piece. Is that the one where you can the CS4 up, I think. CS4 up. So let's, um, let's see, if I can make it go faster, Brian. Okay, I will. Um, file open. This is the cover for Captain Wonder that I did with Philip Tan a few years ago. Let's go a little closer. Okay. Now, let's say Philip's not around. I don't have time to get the art back to him, have him do a change, but I'm really not happy with something on the cover. Okay? I'm making all this up. I'm f f perfectly happy with the cover. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is, so we have... I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. They're separated from the, the, the thing. So let me go ahead and control. Control A, control shift, C, control V. Okay. So now this layer here, five, is a flattened layer. So the background's in there, everything, right? I want to change Captain, Captain Wonder, move some stuff around here. Um, I have, just to make it so we can do it in time, I have two flats set up. Okay, so now this piece is completely flattened, the artwork now. That, that line art is all together. There's no separation, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go into these layers really quick. Grab a lasso. Grab Captain Wonder. Shift key. Grab, excuse me. Grab Billy. I'm going to, I do have them both selected, yes. Control C, Control V. Okay, so now there's a layer. Where is it? Where is it? I had a selection, I swear. Where did it go? Sometimes Photoshop likes to mess with you, by the way, just so you know. Uh, let me try this one more time. Okay, boom, got Billy. Shift. Whoops. That's okay, I know, I know. Got Captain Wonder. Control, get to the right layer, control C, control V. Boom. So this layer just has Billy and Captain Wonder in it, but Billy and Captain Wonder are in the background. So I want to move Billy and Captain Wonder a little bit, okay? But there's all this stuff in the background, right? So I need a patch or something. No, you don't. So let me show you how you do this. Okay, so I have them selected. I'm gonna go back into this layer now that has everything flattened, okay? This is magic. Edit, fill, content aware fill. Okay, Photoshop's thinking. You can tell it's doing something special because it's thinking. You'll like this, trust me. We could think faster, though. Soon we'll be able to do this with our minds. <laughs> go, go, go. OK, boom. They're gone. And you'll notice now, it's done a pretty good job of putting stuff back there. It's all in the same drawing style and all the same type. It's not perfect. But if you had to completely make it clean, it'd be a good place to start from, OK? So let's bring back Billy and Captain Wonder, OK? I'm going to get rid of my selection. And I just want to change some stuff on Captain Wonder. He's not quite in the right pose for me. So let's go back to that puppet tool that I just showed you. Think about it as putting bones kind of in a 3D character, elbow, wrist, hand. I'm going to do his little capey thing here. I'm going to throw a few here on Billy because I don't really want him to move too much. Okay. So now I go in. 
the shoulder's not quite where I want it to be, about there, that's more like it, you know, not quite as pronounced. Took that shoulder, bring it in a little bit more. Take this wrist, you know, there we go. <laughs> Come on, Portland, please. <laughs> You're supposed to be the hip, cool town. Come on. Take the cape. I want to move the cape. I want to move the cape more. <laughs> you can do like totally elaborate. All I'm going to say to you people is take this technique and make gifts. Many, <laughs> many gifts. Okay? So I got shoulder up, shoulder down. And you'll see now that I have that leeway of the content aware fill behind him. That background's back there, so I can move stuff. I can't move stuff completely out, because you saw it, it doesn't completely match. But for any kind of little sort of movements where I'm sliding stuff out of the way, you're not gonna notice. That's what puppet tool, puppet tool is for. Okay, let's go quick to the magic, magic dark inking tool. Okay, don't need this, to enter. Okay, so. This is a photo of one of my friends, Dan Presido, who he lets me screw with his photo. Now this photo, you'll notice, is a little bit kind of manipulated already, so it has an unsharp mask on it. In this technique I'm about to show you, unsharp mask is critical, so you'll have to run it first before you do the next step that I'm gonna show you, okay? Um, I might even run a little bit more of an unsharp mask on this one even, so let's filter, sharpen, Unsharp mask, not quite that high. Bring it down just like a little bit. A little bit more oomph. Hit OK. Now we're going to go into the tool that you would never think anyone would tell you to use for inking ever in your life. We're going to go into oil paint. Really? Oil paint? That? Well, not really that, OK? The default has a stupid shine sign sh <laughs> shine setting, which you want to get rid of. The first thing, boom, you don't want that. Okay. Now the trick is up here, these two sliders. Okay. So we have stylization, and notice what happens as I pull it. Cleanliness. Notice what happens as I pull it. Okay. You hit OK. Now you're gonna go. That's not inked. Ha ha. Wait. I'm going to run the unsharp mask again. Unsharp mask is really your friend for a lot of this stuff, by the way. I'm going to bring back the unsharp mask to a much higher setting. Bring it up to about 1.8, something like that. Hit OK. Image adjust threshold. Threshold turns things to either black or white. No shades of gray. Okay. Not bad for a two minute ink job, right? <laughs> so the fun part about this, let's go ahead and undo that last step, is let's say I want to get a little bit more detail out of this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate everything I just did. I'm going to go ahead again and run the, excuse me, image adjust threshold, okay? I'm going to have one be a little bit darker, so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to have the other one adjust threshold. Image adjust threshold. Have it a little bit higher, so more whites. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it, well, I could just lower the opacity. There's a lot of ways to skin the cat on any of this stuff. You'll see now how I have a nice half tone. And see, any place where there's like, I mean, there's little black things up here that, you, again, you can just go back into the brush tool and just, you know, just, you know, kill them. <laughs> you can also come back in, you know, and start, you know, maybe doing a little bit of more real inking in here to add to it. Fix anything that got a little bit too smooth on you. You know, make another, you can make another layer start fixing anything like that. His eyes got a little bit, you know, kind of bloopy on you. Go back and do some white. Some highlight. Don't want that too much. Uh, really calibrate your 
tablets before you try to demo these things in front of people. Um, you know, stuff like that. Again, you can start going a little bit more wild with it, break in some lines, you know, change, don't, don't necessarily keep everything that you're given. Okay. Um, let's see, we're going over 352. Okay. So that is, that's one of the darkness. So it's, so it's oil paint filter and unsharp mask and threshold. Okay. This will also be, is a great tool for cleaning up your line art. Okay, it will smooth lines for you. Okay, so if you're going quickly on stuff, this is this is this is a good trick. Okay, all right. So let's talk about one other sort of real kind of fun Photoshopy trick because I have very little time. So I'll open. Okay, this is a small drawn eight and a half by eleven pencil roughs for a, for a book that I, we just finished shifting. Um, you know, the good part again against about pencils, when you have them even if they're rough, is you blow them up and you've got plenty of stuff to work with. So here's the original. And here's this sort of dry <coughs> brush look, OK? Let me show you how you get that dry brush look really, really fast. So, let me go ahead and go back to this base one. I'll duplicate it just so we have it to see around. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my favorite tools, the smudge tool. See how I got this kind of smeary brush? Did you see that? Okay. Let me make it a little bit smaller. this over. So all I'm going to do is start kind of going in here and smoothing with the, kind of going in the direction of the lines that we already have. Smudging right over the thing. Again, just trying to follow the form that's already there. Really quickly. have to make these noises when you do this stuff. If you don't, it will suck. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. You can always tell people in your studio, Brian Haberlin told me I had to do this. And they'll go, oh, well, that's all right. Uh, smooth, 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 really quick. All right. So, great. You smudged the heck out of the pencil work. Well done, Brian. Okay, right there. So again, what filter is our friend? The unsharp mask filter is our friend. Uh, get over there, there we go. So this time I'm gonna be very aggressive with it. I'm gonna go 350. Now see what happens if I go like really big with the unsharp mask? You don't really want that. So what we want is we want the little, we want all those little strokes emphasized, okay? Hit okay. You maybe even could do it twice, image, adjust, threshold. And see how you have this nice, strokey, you know, it's not necessarily a mainstream comic style, but it's a darn good indie comic style, okay? And that's just done with the sharpening tool. Let's go ahead and unsharpen this one more time, then I'll do questions, because I think they're gonna kick me out. So let's sharpen it one more time, and you'll see the difference between the amount of lines I get as opposed to what we had before. So image, adjust, threshold. Now you'll see how it opens up more. See? And then if you go on top of that with real inking and really cleaning up, I mean, you're, you're already, you know, 80% of the way there. Okay? All right. And it's... I got time for questions. Questions? Anybody? Yeah. Well, she got you first, right behind you. She beat you. Digitalarttutorials.com. Yes. Are you talking about undercolor? But just 
You're the difference between the styles. Are you talking about undercolor or just pure black and white? I'm talking about the difference between your inkjet printer printing just with the black cartridge or printing with the black cartridge and colors added for rich black. No, not necessary. You know, and most people, when we do it, when we are doing separations for real printing, CMYK printing, uh, often I'll mi we'll mix a black. So our blacks will have undercolors built in, and our undercolors will be built with a little slightly more cyan cast, so they'll be a little cooler. And most people can't tell the difference, but it makes a difference, I think, at the end of the day. Um, can I ask two questions, actually? Yeah. Uh, the first one is that, that app that you use for the postcard in your comic book. Yes. It's for Android or Apple, phones or tablets. And my, uh, my second question is, what kind of uh, tablet or Cintiq do you use for the postcard? Is it just like a regular? I have a 21 UX and I have a 22 HD Touch that I use. That's pretty new, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How do you like that? Um, its surface is a little more reflective than I would have liked. Uh, my 21 UX is not the same. Uh, so usually like in that part of the studio where I work on it, I don't have the banks of light on above me. Okay. But it's still nice, it's huge, the resolution's great, you know, everything's good about it, it's just, you know. I wish there was more touch PC things. I mean, I wish, I, I, wanted, I wanted Photoshop to already be minority report. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't, and that's disappointing to me. <laughs> I know in the past you've been a pretty big fan of the liquify tool. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more controllable. Yeah. Um, what? Speak. <laughs> use your words. Um, what, what do you use a portable device, and what do you use, and what apps do you use? Like iPad thing. To draw on? Yeah. This is my transportable device with the laptop. This is a 13-inch Cintiq HD. But there's also the, a whole bunch of new Cintiqs that just came out. There are a bunch of new real 13s. This, it does work both ways. I use PC, I, on PC because I do a lot of 3D stuff. Have you yet to find anything that you can only do with inking on paper with ink that you can't replicate digitally? The fun? <laughs> I love, I mean, because part of this too is like, let's say we take this, right? I, I'm, I'm a hybrid guy, all right? So I'll take this, and I probably won't finish this in the computer. I take that and then print it out for my blacks, and then finish it with, okay, and then finish it by hand. You know, because that'll save me all the amount of time, and you know, yeah. Thank you all for coming, booth 810. Now I have to, for some reason, run to the other room and set up.